central to that process, so we can't let sound banks go to the wall, uh, whether you like it or not. Uh, they are special in that regard compared to uh, you know, even big famous corporates or, or even individuals going bankrupt. I mean, banks happen to be special in a capitalist system. But, but what are we talking about there? Okay, central banks are the lender of last resort. Uh, the bank needs money. The central bank uh, prints more money. Uh, that's, that's what's been going on, and that's why we're having inflation. That's why coffee's at an all-time high. Where did you see inflation? Price inflation is rampant across the board. You're, not, you're not talking about G... Where is it? It's, it's, it, where is it? I didn't see Food it. is hitting a wheat all-time high. Coffee all-time high. Uh, prices across the board hitting all-time highs. Mean, high. that, that's that's arguably. Yeah, but that's because uh, of demand from emerging markets. Yes, as well. There are many factors involved in the in the uh, food price uh, hikes. Yeah. You can't say that's, that's strictly because of labor is going yeah. up. China, the labor pool in China is no longer. Oh, there's the also huge, low. as, as uh, Jan was saying, huge demand out of out of emerging markets for food products. Yeah. Um, that aside, yeah, I mean, that's the and they're basis. also getting out of the U.S. They dollar, which has well. been a world reserve currency since the end of World War II, which is another huge a problem for the U.S. banking system because they don't have the extraordinary indulgence as de Gaulle called it, of writing okay. checks they never have to cash. So why are they getting out of the U.S. dollar? Because That's, it's the devil's currency. Because it's falling. Uh, okay, so how is, it is I'm asking you, because you guys are the experts, right. is part of the solution here a way to build up the value of the U.S. dollar in the eyes of the world's investment community? I, I don't think so. I think the solution is to come up with a new re reserve currency for the globe, which oh. takes into consideration more of these, uh, the Eurozone plus uh -huh. precious metals. Uh, which uh, create a new... And no dollars? Would, would create <laughs> a, a, <laughs> I'm sorry? Go ahead, Jan. No dollars. Um, well, my, Very think, little well, dollars, because too, it's... it's I, th I think the solution is that we've, we've lived too long <laughs> with the U.S. consumer as, as borrower uh, and spender of last resort. We need to see the emerging markets and the millions in China and India and elsewhere in the emerging markets. They are going to be carriers of the new growth global growth baton in the future. We need to ensure that they, that they're, they're, you know, we have a more balanced economy uh, and we're not overly reliant on U.S. housing uh, and the U.S. Mm. consumer. I mean, that's, that makes for a more balanced economy. So that the U.S. consumer is global no longer economy. the engine. Uh, there's something else, if you don't mind, I'd, li I'd like to look at in more detail and, and get our panel's opinions on, on this as well. Something the ECB has been looking at now is how to approach a debacle, we're going back to Northern Rock, how to approach a debacle like Northern Rocks, should it occur, occur within a financial institution that actually reaches across borders? You know, very clearly the problems at Northern Rock fell squarely on the bailout of the Bank of England. But if we have a similar... Uh, it's, it's a major issue in Europe, because mm -hmm. the central bank, the European central bank, is not officially the lender of last resort. Exactly. And that's what we have. Banks are now international, so there should be much more cooperation between the central banks and the regulators. We can't have national regulators. We, and so national how difficult banks. will this be to resolve? <laughs> Extremely difficult. Uh -huh. And what's it's, the worst case scenario, then? Well, it's when one international bank is in big trouble, who's going to jump in and save it? Mm -hmm. And any mass? Well, I mean, what, what's, the, what's the difference if, you, if you're allowing these banks to, in, to sell cross-border collateralized debt obligations to, into Germany pension funds? You know what the war, the, the real war that's going on in the world today is the war between savers and speculators. The workers and the savers versus borrowers and speculators. The borrowers and the speculators get off scot-free whenever they make a mistake because the bank bails them out and they get to keep all the winnings when they make winning okay. bets. The savers and the workers who have their pension accounts, that's where all this debt ends up. That's where mm -hmm. all this debt explodes. So that's the real war that's going on. It's a cultural war. If you want to talk about global issues, the global issue is the world's workers and savers versus the world's speculators don't, and borrowers. Don't, that's forget, the demarcation don't line. forget that workers borrow money to buy their house. Interesting here as well, and I want to bring in some comments yeah. from, uh, from the French President Nicolas Sarkozy while we're on this. He just rather controversially criticized um, the ECB for adding liquidity into money markets without cutting interest rates. And Sarkozy says that facilitates the work of speculators. The ECB says the contrary is true. Which is the case? Well, he forgot to take an economics class because uh, you, uh, the, if the liquidity, I mean, if the crisis is a liquidity crisis, then you have to put in more liquidity in the economy. You don't need to lower interest rates. Mm -hmm. what, what speculators do is, is they play with these conduits that you're speaking of. It's, it's not so much how much money that enters the market or what kind of money that enters the market it's how fast you can keep the money moving. Um, 
that is a very bare bones analysis on my part, Professor, and I apologize for, for the, its paucity. However, uh, g a good investment strategist can make money off of anything if he keeps it moving. It's certainly true in the metals market. It's certainly true in the derivatives market. Oh, no. no well, well, I know quite a few uh, hedge fund people, derivatives people who, would, who are sitting pretty, who would argue that point with you with you know, decimal points until the cows come home. The, keeping money moving is the key. And whenever new money is injected into a conduit or a market, no matter what the politicians and boffins say, there's going to be someone in that market who is going to know how to move it, put it in a port, get a little bit more, and move it on. And the ones who can do that successfully are the ones who get to the top of the heap. No, I think, I think Sarkozy smells a rat, and rightfully so. You know, he, he's pointing out the fact that there's a lot of market manipulation going on with these banks, and there is. They are, they are, they should be... Uh, even today, the uh, the SEC is saying they're looking into hedge funds and insider trading and market manipulation. The FSA in England said that 40 percent of all deals before they are consummated or that they can track as insider dealing and inside information. These markets are be are entirely corrupt. And Sarkozy is correct if he wants to uh, you know get away from the sound of one hand clapping because if you can talk to a banker, he'll talk about liquidity versus debt uh, versus this uh, something else. But this all basically comes down to interest rate arbitrage and the fact that they can borrow at one rate and lend at another rate and then offset that to another bank and keep this ball rolling out of velocity that makes them fees without having to assume any of the debt. And that is completely anathema to a capitalist system because all you're doing is you're rewarding the speculator and you're penalizing the worker and the saver. You now you've got a society of speculator kings who lord over the society is a new aristocracy of hedge fund managers. Guess what? I and you, you know where I'm going with, with that. Banks <laughs> should be keeping in their balance sheets the loans. And, uh, the big, and they don't make money on they the don't, They don't the big, keep them on the their balance sheets. Yeah, they should the be. The big That's what I is this. <laughs> okay. There ahead, is a huge it. difference between th economic theories and theories of how you make money. Hmm. What you're hearing here is you're hearing theory, <laughs> mechanics of economics, mechanics from the professor, which all makes a lot of sense. You will find that those people, mostly, who have made lots of money in all kinds of markets, make their own rules, and that's why they get rich. But let's go with the professor's example for a second, and we agree on this, that they should not be able to loan and loan and loan and multiple loans, the same loan over and over again. That's just limiting or capping the leverage. Okay. Let, let's, let's go down that's that path for a second. The only problem let's go down that path for a second. leverage. Let's go down that path for a second. 35 to 40 percent of all the earnings that come out of the S&P 500 are financial institutions. They, the American economy is, 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 is tied very heavily to this. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying, and I agree with you, if you take the ability for these banks to keep loaning on the same loans back and forth through this global daisy chain of debt irresponsibility, you're talking, about, you're talking about a reduction in GDP. So you're willing to accept a reduction in GDP for a sounder banking system with has less leverage in the system. You're willing to make that trade-off? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, 30 then, seconds left. Answer. 30 you know? seconds left. Jan, I'm going to let you have final words there from London. Well, it, I think this key issue here is risk. Risk is great if it delivers high yield. You know, and European banks uh, and other, uh, other institutions have been buying all, all these new found angle securities because they were giving high yield. But when the risk actually materializes and crystallizes on the ground, like we saw in the housing in U.S. and uh, Florida, and, and Canada, then everyone runs away from it, and it, and it creates the, these, these problems. I think the real problem is... Um, you know, asset bubbles, um, they're very difficult to spot. They usually start with a good story, but they tend to get overblown. Uh, and markets tend to overdo the good story. Uh, and when, when, okay. when the good story uh, you know, disappears, then we're in trouble. Okay, last words there from Jan Rondolf joining us uh, from London, Head of Sovereign Risk at Global Insight. Thank you so much for that. Thanks to the rest of our panel as well. To my right here, Catherine Lubachinsky, Professor of Economics at uh, Paris 2. And uh, to my left, Max Kaiser, founder of CarmenBank.com. And Greg Kapitas, senior writer for Bloomberg News. Thanks all so much. Very interesting little discussion tonight. That is all. <laughs> Thanks to our audience for watching as well. Bonsoir. Join us on France 24 for live coverage of the Rugby World Cup. We bring you the highlights, all the latest results, and the news behind the scenes. 
Tell us what you think of the teams on our blog at francefancat.com and get all the results in real time. The Rugby World Cup on France 24.